Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Unstoppable. I'm Ralph Graves, but you know that. But I'm going to introduce you to somebody today for the very first time, or maybe you've heard of him before, my new friend, Adrian Marino. How are you, sir? I'm doing absolutely wonderful today. Now, guys, Adrian is a transformational coach. He's an entrepreneur. He's a speaker. Um, he's he, he uh, he's known for a topic, uh, rewiring your subconscious mind, removing emotional baggage. And I just thought that he'd be a great fit for what we do here at Unstoppable. He has great energy. So sit back, relax. We're going to have a good time. Welcome, Adrian, man. Tell us, tell us, tell, tell, tell my, my audience where, where you're from and what you do exactly. Yeah, so I'm from Austin, Texas, born and raised. Um, it was the entrepreneurs around me that kept me here, and I'm really happy that I've stayed. Um, but aside from that, what I what I specifically do is imagine this. You're you're on a hot air balloon and you're trying to get to a nice destination. So you jump on that hot air balloon, you start going up, start catching some momentum, but then all of a sudden, when you really start catching some flight, the air balloon comes back down a little bit. And yeah. it goes back up again, then it goes back down a little bit. And then you keep creating this really funny pattern. Just like human beings, we create these funny patterns in our life. Like we get really, like for example, if you're an entrepreneur, you jump into business, you start getting some wins, start getting some success. And out of nowhere, that doubt hits you, a level of doubt and insecurity that you never dealt with before shows up, some fears show up. And next thing you know, you start running into what people call an upper limit. Right. What people call yeah. the lid. What I yeah. do is I help people take that off and break through it so they can get to where they want to go with a lot more ease so they can just, you know, make the kind of impact they want. And I do that through showing them how to specifically rewire their neural pathways because our brains are plastic and you can change it whenever you want. It's just a matter of decision. And I help people make that decision in a very systematic way, we can say. Well, man, I'm glad that you do that. And I think we've all been there. We rise high, we take a little dip, we rise higher. I, I could totally relate to that. Yep. Um, I don't think anyone listening is is far into that. Um, and, and so uh, I get it. I, I get what that means, man, about rewiring your brain to, to be able to do that. Let me ask you this, because uh, there are a couple of topics that, that we're going to jump into. But I had this conversation with my wife today. I, I think that we are... The, <sighs> When it comes to our brains, and, and, and this one made me made me jump into this with you about being about our brains being plastic and and, and whatnot. Um, we have so many things calling for our attention every single solitary day. Every, text messages from friends, family, constantly trying to reach here, constantly trying to go there. We have so many things distracting us or so many things that we're trying to give focus to that we really can't give real focus and real attention sometimes to the things that 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 matter um does this play a part in 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 keeping that lid on us i think we're too connected you hit it on the nail you you hit it on the nail right there so i wouldn't just say it's the amount of things that are grabbing our attention because that a hundred percent i mean not let's imagine your phone is off yeah. Right. Let's imagine yeah. you're just you're just uh, walking down the street. Not even if you have a phone or anything around you, you have this thought calling for your attention. You have this thought calling for your attention. You have this memory come up. You have just all these random pictures come up. In other words, our minds are on. It's like we think 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. It's yeah. got to a point where we're not even thinking. Thinking is happening to us. Yeah. So. It's a matter of us not paying attention to our full experience. Now, when I say this, I mean, paying attention to the things that matter. Let's talk about what matters. Um, we can be subjective about it and say, you know, my wife, my, my children, my um, family, my, my career, all of that, very valid for um, anybody's individual experience. But if we're going to look at it objectively, Instead of subjective, it is actually look at what really matters and what matters in any given moment is your full experience of that moment yeah. the only thing yeah. that matters is your experience but as human beings we don't like to face our entire experience all the time mm -hmm. for example um when i when i was maybe like 80 clients into what i do 
um, you know, helping people rewire their brain. I was probably like on my 80th client and I was super confident in what I did, fitting very great at what I did, um, had a great track record. And then out of nowhere, this, we got this client who made $19 million a year. And in my mind, he was a 56 year old man. In my mind, I'm like, I'm this 25 year old kid who, who's like, there's no way like I can help this guy. And so all of a sudden I started to doubt myself. Yeah. All of a sudden, I started to question my ability to do what I did, even though I had 77 successes right before this one. So I was like, there is something that is causing this, but I could have easily been, I'm Adrian Moreno. I'm the best at what I do. That, that ain't me. That feeling ain't me. That's like, I'm not, I could have easily denied my experience. So those things that matter, that pop up, your moment to moment experience, are popping up because they are there. They are living realities. And when you don't accept, and when you don't, I don't want to just say accept, but acknowledge and allow a feeling or a thought to come, you try to ignore it. What you do is you build up this energetic block because your thoughts, this is a really interesting concept, but this is like physics at this point. This isn't even, you know, spiritual or just motivation. Right, right, yeah. Like physics at this point. If your, 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 your thoughts, they are, and they can be measured on an EEG machine. And there's another machine that starts with a K as a long word, but um, they uh, can measure when you actually think, right? Yeah. Like they can actually measure a thought. And the only reason they can measure a thought is because that machine is designed to read electromagnetic uh, pulses of energy. So when you think, you send off this little unit of energy, just like calories, right? Calories build your body. Thoughts build the body of your experience because you have this unit of energy. When you focus on a unit of energy, when you think a unit of energy, like you focus on it or you suppress it, you ignore what's happening. You ignore what matters. When you do that, you intensify the charge behind that electromagnetic energy. Does this make sense so far? Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. And so what, what now happens if you send this wave of energy through your nervous system that you feel as an emotion, and when you're ignoring that, energy cannot be stopped. So energy then gets blocked, but now it's just now it's just chaotic because yeah. it's blocked and it's moving everywhere. And then before you know it, you can't make more than $100,000 a year. Before you know it, you're depressed. Before you know it, you're riddled with anxiety. Before you know it, you are having these weird phobias and fears come up. These mm -hmm. things are not happening because our brains are imbalanced. These things are happening because there's thoughts and there's feelings that arise that we right. don't allow ourselves to pay attention to. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that, and I, 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 is that because we're too connected? Is being too connected the problem? Could that be one of the problems? That we're too, I, and I, I say that because I think of I think of all of all of the great men and women before us, the, the great emperors, Marcus Aurelius. And they were not they were not as connected in terms of I would go as far as to say <laughs> they're probably more connected with themselves. Exactly. I would say exactly. Yeah, I would say the lack of I would say the problem is the lack of connection towards ourselves. Yes. And 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 being so connected in this kind of world can can be a factor in that. But I want to be very careful with um, with um, blaming outside uh, right, outside right. influences. It is no matter what this world is going to become more and more tech technology based. I'm actually building a technology company. I'm mm -hmm. trying to make this world more gamified, more tech, but for children, for mental health. Right, right. And so we're going in this direction. It's a matter of internally, or do we know how to uh, properly um, navigate through our own psychological and emotional processes I to, um, to use these things rather than have them use us? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that because it's available that it's harmful. I, yeah, I, exactly. You know, if, I'm going to, if I go to a restaurant and it's a buffet, <laughs> it's just available. Yep. And I don't think it being available is harmful. I think how I have Eating handle, way too much of that buffet. Right. I yep. think that will not allow me to break the ceiling, to break the lid, 
uh, that we're talking about. And I want to get into a topic, uh, you know, I want to get into a topic um, very shortly Go ahead. Yeah. About, about really preparing our minds. And I got to I got to use this story. I was talking to my cousin today and, I, and listen, whether you're a hunter or not a hunter, that's not the deal. My cousin's a hunter. And if you're listening, oh, he's hunting an animal, whatever the case may be. You, it is what it is. It is what it is. He's hunting and he's, he remembers, tells me the story of his father-in-law, three deer. They had pushed deer toward him. And he's waiting in the tree stand. He said, I saw all three, but because I didn't focus on one, I missed everything. Oh, yes. I missed everything. And I so like although that. we see everything, I think Tell me if I'm wrong, Adrian, you're the expert. I think it's going to take focus on the one thing at a time or the one thing that makes us tick, the one thing of our purpose to really allow us to be successful and really allow us to train our mind. So, um, yeah, you know, no, I, you're 100 yeah, percent right. And at the yeah. end of the day, your mind is not capable of focusing on more than one thing. And yeah. we have this idea that we can multitask. It is in, right. it is physically, <laughs> biologically, psychologically impossible to do anything that's called multitasking. You can't. All Thank you do, you. all you do, all you're doing is short bursts of distracted effort. You're Me and my not, wife had this conversation, man. Like, yes. like multitasking. I don't know why it became a thing. I don't know why it became. And who I, wants to like multi? Like, like, like you, nothing you're gonna do. Because think about it. You can either go straight like this, or you can spread yourself out and try yeah. to go straight, but you're going to go wide instead. Yeah. And it's going to take a lot longer to get to that destination. That's straight ahead. Yeah. yeah. And yes, I can watch TV and fold clothes. Yeah. 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 But <laughs> I can, that's multitasking. I can, I can wash dishes and, and look at, and, and, and listen to the radio. Yeah. Mundane uh, things like mundane that. Mundane yeah. things. But, but even when I was a police officer on the street, I had to give full attention to what was in front of me. Absolutely. I, I don't know why. I don't know why multitasking became such a we believe. I, I think and 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 I'm not I'm not kicking dirt on my multitaskers out there. You tell me I can multitask. What I hear is that you can do a lot of things, but you do very few things well. Absolutely. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big reason why I, my, why my business is where it's at. Is like we, we used to be fitness coaches, too. And and then I realized, like, I'm doing fitness coaching and I'm changing people's brains. And like, uh, let me just do one thing the absolute best that nobody else can touch me at. And if I can yeah. do this one thing, yeah. then I will be able to go really far with it. Right. And yeah. no, that's very true. We got to make sure we're emotionally stable enough to actually have that focus because focus is a byproduct of being in an emotional state that allows yeah. you to focus. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody listening on here today, Adrian, everybody listening. If I were to ask you, you know, everybody, everybody wants to make between a six and eight figure income. Right. That, that's that's Boy, fine. That sounds lovely. That, that's fine. That's great. I want you if you're listening to make between six and eight figures. I want you. I want you to live life to the fullest. I want you to live your full purpose. I, I want you to mature and blossom into everything God designed you to be. But here's the thing, and you have a, a topic and I want to talk about it. Most of us lack the emotional capacity to even earn that or to keep that. Let's talk about having the art of building the emotional capacity for a six to eight figure income. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm a storyteller. Yeah, so I'm gonna tell that story. in a quick story. Tell I had a client story. who came to me, and now this is, you know, okay. So keep in mind, he was already a seven figure earner, okay? Yeah, but he wanted yeah. to go to eight, he wanted to go to the next level, but he was also struggling to hold it. So what was going on was he was a second year in entrepreneur, an entrepreneurship, already doing a hundred thousand dollars, already doing about 85 to like 90 grand a month on average okay. Okay. in his business. And then he had a goal of, okay, I want to get to 100K and surpass 100. But he hit 100K three times. He hit 100K a month three times. And each time he hit 100K, what happened was clients would start canceling. Deals would start falling through. His salespeople would start messing up deals. Yeah. He would start making very dumb decisions with his money, losing a lot of money. And then yeah. he'd find himself just losing all this money. And then he's like, what the heck? He's like, for some reason, every time I hit 100K, I stop myself from producing and the world just comes to shit. And he's yeah, all like, yeah. what, what, what's going on? Yeah. And so I took him through a neuro remapping session. Now what neuro remapping does is it reverse engineers what you're experiencing in your life down to what's causing it. So we can drop what's causing it and actually fix it for good. 
Okay. Not, I don't want to say fixed because you're not broken, but, but that's just language. Now, aside from that, um, he, when I help somebody reverse engineer something, I help them. So in other words, neural remapping is designed to get somebody into theta brain waves. This okay. is going to answer the question. So right now we're in beta. Beneath this okay. is alpha. Beneath that is theta. So okay. when you're in theta brain waves, something significant happens. Your doorway in between your conscious and unconscious swings wide open meaning you have the freedom to write whatever you want onto your unconscious. In other words, you have the freedom to create yourself by design. Okay. Create the way you want to think, feel, and whatever. But the subconscious also communicates very well in theta. So I will get somebody in theta and I will say, now that you're in this state, let your mind show us why you're dealing with this right now, yeah. why this is happening. Because you know, he went back to a memory. I, in, in this was like all during our session. Okay. called like timeline therapy. He went back to a memory where he was sitting down on a dirt, on a dirt floor. Okay. He was like, I'm on a dirt floor. There's dirt everywhere. There's rubble everywhere. And there's a house with no, um, no wall. I mean, no, no, uh, windows or no doors. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, okay. And where are you at? He goes, I'm back at home. He was from the Philippines. So he was back okay. in a memory of him at home. He goes, I'm back at home. And I said, and how do you feel? He said, I feel like uh, this is good enough. I said, huh, what's this? Like, what's, what's this that's, that's so good enough? Nothing. Nothing at all. I don't have anything. And I have shade right now, so that's good enough. And I was like, little, this was a little three-year-old mind. Like, yeah, we think yeah. little kids are not there. He was right. processing this moment in this way. And then he goes, yeah. I can't want anything more because I have shade today. If I want something more, I'll be selfish. Mm. This became mm. a this became a story that he told himself for 25 years because he was 28 years old at this point. That story of I will be selfish if I ask for more was still playing. So he was a 28-year-old, uh, pretty much a young kid still, making a million dollars a year the wow. more and more money he made the more and more guilty he felt but wow. he wasn't paying attention to the guilt so it became the limit so his brain did not his brain wouldn't allow him to make so much money because it didn't make sense to his brain it didn't make sense to mm. his nervous system mm. you will forever you will forever create whatever you believe to be true like um i've even had clients who were um, like, okay, so another real quick one. I had another client who, for some reason, he, he so he was already 23 years old and he was making about, maybe about like a little bit over half a million dollars a year, had a Tesla, had a car, had the girl, like everything right. was great for this dude. Right. You know, six right. pack and everything. Yeah. But he had this nagging problem. And this is another lid that stops your ability to create more success, a behavior problem. He, for some reason, was always late to things and he was never organized. Now, the thing is, is he was even late to our session. So we were like, all right, well, let's figure, I was like, well, let's figure this out. Yeah. So we took him through the same process. And he went back to a moment where he was walking into a classroom at eight years old and he stops. And then he, he walks into the classroom late, like two hours late. Yeah. And then he goes, I'm walking into the classroom late. And I was like, and how do you feel? And he goes, and I feel um, so good. I like this. I was like, you like being late? He was like, yeah, I like being late. Hmm. And I was like, what, what do you like about being late so much? He goes, when you walk in late, people pay attention to you. Hmm. I stopped and I was like, huh. So remember, he was in his, this was all in a memory. Right, he, was, right. he was revisiting a time where he was eight years old. So I told yeah. him, I said, I said, answer this question as an eight-year-old boy. Eight-year-old Kevin. Do people pay attention to you? He goes, no. So I said, okay. Clearly, now we discovered why he likes being late. It gives him a sense of significance. So now I was like, now I want to figure out where that's coming from. Took him, I uh, did what I did. He went during our session. He goes back to another memory where now he's five years old. Mm -hmm. Every single day, his mom used to pick him up and walk him from school to the house at the end, at the end of every school day because I lived a couple blocks away. Okay. But on this particular day, the mom had to work a little bit later. And so she sent the older brother, who was about like 12 or 13 at the time, to go pick up his five-year-old brother and walk him home. 
He went to go pick him up. I guess the brother was having a bad day and he walked up to you. He goes, come on. Like, I wanted to play with my friends. Like, you're such a, like, you're such an inconvenience. Like, why can't you just walk to the freaking house yourself? You're big enough. Just walk to the house. Yeah. And in that moment, my little, my little, my client at five years old tells himself, I'm not important. And in that moment, he chose to believe that he was no longer important, which made him not organize, not prepare or plan or be organized for anything because, as he said in his own words, I'm not important enough to be great. Mm. So he kept on locking in his income, getting in his way, because being late all the time started messing up his reputation. He was like, agent, there's no way I'm going to be able to take it to the next level if I keep this going. He had another lid. That was his lid. That was his limit was a behavior problem. So yeah. these things are coming from if you don't have. I put it this way. You can't have a $100 million a year um, income level if you feel hmm. like you're not if you feel like you're not good enough for a $100,000 a month. I mean, $100,000 a year income level. I you're believe really, that. I, I, I love what you I, I believe this. It's almost your, your beliefs will not you like you have to have room to hold on to what you want. I made over half a million dollars and lost everything my first time, my first round of becoming successful. And when I, the reason why I lost everything was because I had a genuine belief that I was not worthy of love. And because I went through an experience when I was young, I witnessed my parents split up, which made me believe I was not safe or worthy of love. Yeah. And I associated success with love. So I wanted to become successful. So the moment I became successful, it didn't make sense to my mind because it was associated with love. So I had to piss it all away. And whenever I actually met that little four year old boy again, I was actually able to reparent him and let him feel that he was loved. Then and only then was I able to pick my income back up and actually maintain it and yeah. multiply. It. And all of that comes down to not what you do, because it's not a matter of what you do. That's going to make you your income. You can be rich doing anything. Literally, there's people on YouTube, people making TikToks <laughs> being rich. Yeah. It does not matter what you do. It's a matter of who you are being when you do what you do and who you are being is a matter of what you believe to be true about yourself. And man, this is you are speaking volumes not only about yourself, because I, I, this is, it sounds like almost part of this is, is what we've kind of skimmed the surface when they talk about imposter syndrome, kind of skimmed the sur surface yeah. on it. But you've gone so much deeper with that. And we're going to talk about how we can get there. But this also should affect who we it, it can affect who we work with. If I'm working with um, I'm a client of someone who does not have this belief system correct mm -hmm. right and they are suffering from the law of the lid and they haven't dealt with some underlying stuff they can only take me so far now, now what 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 happens if i have this mentality i've i've i've, I've sat down i talked to adrian we've gotten to it hey ralph you're struggling with this we, we got down to it we'll talk about our processes how to get to we, that. we eliminated yeah yeah we'll definitely talk about that but then now i'm working with someone a manager, a, 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 a promoter who hasn't. And that's directly affecting my income. I don't know, man. It's crazy. I'm just are you open? Right are you open to a, a different perspective on this? I yeah, that's why we're having this conversation. That's why we're here. Okay. That's so, why we're here. So when I say okay, this may be a, a new idea to some of your listeners, or this may not be, but put it this way. Your logic may argue with this at first, but let me remind you that your logic has told you many lies. And one of those lies is <laughs> I'm not one of those lies is I'm not good enough. Um, I can't do this. Your physical reality, like okay. your entire environment mm -hmm. is a reflection of your own internal perceptions. That also, yes. that also means the people around you. So put it this way. Remember that thought okay let's put it okay let's actually start here you know in in this is a this is going to answer the question so we the u.s has these two electro these two satellites on the northern and western hemisphere of the earth they're designed mm -hmm. to measure the electromagnetic energy of the earth right we, we all vibrate at a certain frequency so it's designed to just measure the collective vibration now in 2000 yes in 2001 
they noticed two ginormous spikes in energy of the earth. They're like, we've never seen spikes like this in the history of existence. What happened? So they decided to look at the data. And as they looked at the data, they, they were able to pinpoint the precise millisecond that the spikes happened because they wanted to see if anything correlated with like what could have happened. And they saw that the first spike happened 15 minutes after the first plane hit the first World Trade Center. They saw the second spike happened seven minutes after the second plane hit. Why am I telling you that? I'm saying this because this clearly demonstrates, because you can't lie, no matter who you were, you felt you felt an emotional pull that day. <laughs> you did, right? you did. Exactly. Yeah. Even, even kids who didn't know what was going on felt yeah. what their parents were feeling. Yeah. And so that large emotional day our emotions literally influenced the physical atmosphere and reorganized its atomic structure, mm -hmm. meaning our own feelings literally changed, changed the outside environment. Not saying our feelings caused this thing, but what I'm saying is this emotional charge after the fact created a real change in the environment. I say that because this also shows that everything is inside out. Like, 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 I'm not. I believe I'm, it. You're like, preaching like, to the choir. Right. Like, like, like Jesus says, um, you know, why wash the outside of the cup when the yeah. inside of the cup, when the one who made the outside also made the inside. Yeah. So if you are working with people, if you're surrounding yourself with people that keep on limiting you, they're only there to remind you that you're limiting yourself in such a way. Because the moment that you change your psychological makeup, your emotional charge, the moment that you truly shift on another level, you will simply and naturally outgrow certain individuals. This is why certain marriages would end. This is why certain yeah. friendships would end. Because yeah. one person is now on another energetic level. And when you're on another energetic level, you simply, can, you, you simply won't make sense anymore together. So reality will reorganize itself and force you out of that person's life. So I would go as far as to say, once you do the work, give it some time and assume the best. Assume that what you're doing is working and watch. You are going to start making different decisions that are going to put you in a different predicament or they're going to start making different decisions that get them out of your predicament. And you yeah. will just see naturally that this is how things work because one movement always influences another. Yeah. No matter what, when you decide to change, you start, you start influencing other people. When somebody says, I'm going to lose weight, people around them are like, what are you doing? They really get influenced by that. They really yeah. feel like, why are you doing that, honey? Like you look great. They, they try yeah. to limit you when you energetically yeah. change. So yeah. that's my answer to that. It may be a, a, a completely different perspective, but I want people to understand that they're not at the mercy of outside conditions unless they accept the belief that they are. I love it, man. Come on, man. I love it. I love exactly what you're saying, man. Um, we have to be so careful who we are around. We have to be so careful if we're growing, if we're going to develop the capacity, you, you got to find people moving in the same direction. That, yeah. And if you, if you, if you find that within yourself, mm -hmm. if you be careful with who you're being, if you find that with yourself, if you move in the right direction, trust me when I say reality will bring the people to you that are also moving in that direction as well. When I say reality, I mean the universe, I mean God, whatever feels right for you will literally move that those pieces towards you. But it starts with you. You cannot change an outside condition um, by uh, ignoring an internal condition. Like inside, outside is the only way out. So let's talk about this alpha, beta, theta. Let's talk about a session with you. Let's talk about what that looks like. Let's talk How we can about actually get into it how we can get into that. Yeah. Yeah. So you can actually do this work for yourself as well. Um, but like, okay, so getting into theta brainwaves, the reason why I like theta is because again, you can change the brain in that state. Theta releases this chemical in your brain that makes it possible for, for um, um, makes it possible for your neurons to be rewired. Okay. Okay. So when your, your neurons are basically these clusters of cells in your brain, that okay. fire and wire every one of your thoughts, feelings, and actions. So okay. whenever you're doing something, you're in get you're in a certain set of neurons are firing and lighting up in your brain. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to change your results, you have to change your neurons. Like you have to change, you have to reorganize your neurons and rewire them completely. So 
Theta is a great way to do that. And how do you get into Theta? So getting into Theta is very super quick and super easy. I'll show you how to do it. So this is just an audio recording, right? Not a video podcast. I, I can make it either one. Okay, either way. But look, if, <laughs> so, I'll, I'll post so, it. I'll put it okay. on if video. Okay, if, if, you're, if you're listening to the podcast, just I want you to close your eyes and envision this. If you're driving, don't close your eyes just yet. Pull over, right. then do this. Right. What you're going to do is you're going to look up. So first, just watch me do it, Ralph, and then you can okay. give it a shot. All right. So you're okay, just gonna, watch. yep. You're just gonna look up with your eyes, and the key here is you're gonna close. So you're gonna close your eyes, but the key is to close your eyes while keeping your eyeballs up. Okay. So my eyeballs are gonna stay up, my eyelids go down with my eyeballs staying up, and then I get this really funny, rapid fluttering sensation. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. Let me see you give it a shot really quick. Okay. Take my. I want you to pay attention. I want you to pay attention to how calm you start feeling too. I'm looking up. Yeah. All right, it's down. There you go. You feel that fluttering? Yeah, yeah. Pay attention to how calming it starts to feel. Does that feel calm a little bit? <laughs> it does. Yeah. Okay. Go put your eyes back up. So what that is, is that is a rapid eye movement. We tap in okay. a rapid eye. We tap in a rapid eye movement every day. Okay. So that's a rapid eye movement. The moment you hit rapid eye movement, your body will start to start to signal you're going to sleep, but you're yes. going to stay aware the whole time. So when you stay aware the whole time, I want y'all to imagine this is like staying awake as you go to sleep, mm-hmm. staying aware as the body goes to sleep. And so once your eyes are fluttering, imagine yourself looking down and walking down 10 steps. The mind is symbolic. We, the mind communicates through images. So if you give it the image of it going deeper, you will literally take your consciousness deeper just okay. by doing that alone. So the image I like to create is 10 steps walking down. Okay. So I'll do the eye trick. That's literally what I will do with somebody. Like I'll put your eyes up, put them down. All right, great. Look down. I want you now to see 10 steps ahead of you. Now I want you to take each step 10. Every muscle, every nerve turns loose, lets loose. You go deeper. Nine, you go deeper. Eight, you go deeper. Ten, seven, all the way to one. When you're at one, trust me, you're there. When you're at one, you will be in a state of calm, state of relaxation. You won't feel like you're deep in a trance. You would just feel very relaxed. If you want to test it to make sure you're in it, there's a tester you can do. And you mm-hmm. can just say, you can just say at the bottom of the stairs, you can just say, my eyes are glued shut, sealed shut, locked tight. If I try to open them, they will be impossible to open. If you cannot open them, you're in theta. Okay. That's, that's fact that you're in theta. But okay. don't panic. If like some of them, oh my God, I can't open my eyes. You're in a state of suggestibility. So you just suggested suggested to yourself that you can't open your eyes and you believed it really quickly because in theta, you really accept a lot of you. You're not like a sponge, but you choose to accept a lot of suggestions. So just okay. say I can okay. easily open my eyes and then you can okay. open them. But okay. now you're in theta. Now, what do you do when you're there? There's so many different things you can do when you're there. But one of the things I would recommend you doing is imagining yourself um, just um meeting up with your little going to your going to a i do this in the visualization go to your house that you grew up in in between the ages mm-hmm. of two and eight okay. whatever house that you grew up in if okay you grew up in more if you grew up in multiple homes just throw up one home it doesn't matter okay. okay walk inside the house familiarize yourself with the house all in your imagination mm-hmm. then go find the bedroom that you slept in as a child then sit there with that little kid and then ask them, hey, what do you need that mom and dad aren't giving you right now? What can I give you right now? What do you need more of? What do you need less of? They're gonna, they may say, I need more attention. I need less alcohol in this. I need less fighting. I want to have more fun. I want dad to come home more. I want, they may answer you in some way. Imagine yourself giving it to them. When you're in that state and they say, for example, I want attention. Okay. Imagine yourself standing on a stage with your entire family front row with all of your friends around and with thousands of strangers holding a sign with your name on it. Let that little boy feel seen. Let that little girl feel seen. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is you're using the imagination to meet psychological and emotional unmet needs because we have unmet needs. Like one of our needs is to be significant. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And just like, just like my client, that need went unmet when he was little, the way that he met it 
with outside condition, with an outside way of being late to things, mm -hmm. not organizing because it met the need of being significant. Mm -hmm. So if you have self-sabotaging behaviors and patterns, it's literally because there's unmet needs that have not been met and you're probably meeting them through other ways. Wow. So the best way is just going through this imaginative process. You know what? To make it even better for your audience, if they want to go through a guided version of exactly what I just told them. Yeah, where can they find that? Just go to www.rewiremythoughts.com slash unshakable. Okay. And I'll email it to you so you can just drop it in the, yeah, you can just yeah. drop it in the um, show notes when you publish it. But again, guys, okay. www.rewiremythoughts.com slash unshakable. Uh, but what this is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to do exactly what I told you and meet these unmet needs on a subconscious level. And, and remember, this is real because your subconscious mind stops maturing around five years old. So you mm. literally, you literally psychologically have a little kid inside of you. This is why whenever you like when like when people, if you ever watch a grown person slam a door or pout like a little ah, kid, I've done that. I've done that. That's your ah. that's, that's like your little child saying, like, ah, you know, getting yeah. mad. And yeah. if you and Ralph, no matter how big, no matter how grown you are, at the end of the day, we're all just unsupervised children. We're that's all it. just we're just these little children in adult bodies trying to act like we know what we're doing. And we're like, we don't know what the <laughs> heck we're doing, but we're just making it happen. Yeah. But that's one of the things that people can do to actually make real changes, not in just their psychological, but their emotional bodies. And when they do like you're going to make up. This is what allows you to create space. Cause you're getting, you're getting that out there. Like for me, I had a little four year old kid who believed I was not safe. And so what I did was I met wow. that little boy. I met that little yeah. boy again. And I said, look, man, you're, th through what I, through what I um, shared with, uh, through what I just talked about that your audience can do, I did this yeah. practice and I found that little four-year-old boy feeling like he was not safe. So what yeah. did I do? I showed him first off that I was still alive. I said, look, man, you're 25 years old. You made it like you're still alive. You're still yeah. going. You're yeah. healthy. You're fit. And not only that, you're secure financially. You're really safe. Like you're safe. But yeah. if you don't feel like it, let me also imagine that I'm cuddling with you in bed. Let me yeah. hold this little four year old boy. Let yeah. him feel, let him feel grown arms around him so he yeah. can feel safe in his body. Yeah. Just by doing that, you make room for more stuff. You make room for more good. So that's one of the things that you can do. Now, how often should one do this, man? How I know we've been talking a long time. However, <laughs> no, we're good, bro. We're good. Yeah, we're yeah. good. How, however, yeah, I can go to 10, but yeah, however, yeah. however often it feels like it's um useful. However yeah. often it feels useful. But let me also let me okay. I think it's very important that I just say this, especially, you know, as we're coming up on this episode, I think it's very important to fit, you know. Leave, I mean, just put this thought in here. And I know I, today I talked about going back and seeing your little child and, um, right. you know, taking clients back to past memories. I know that if I'm not careful and I don't communicate this, that some people may believe that they're at the, that they're at the mercy of past events, that they're at the mercy of unconscious events or childhood. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, you are never at the mercy of your childhood. You are never at the mercy of unconscious past events unless you genuinely believe you are if you mm. pay attention to this entire episode the entire theme is belief unto your faith it's done and the way you're according to yeah. your faith it's done unto you yes sir literally, literally due to your belief you will create what you create so um if you believe that you are at the mercy of your unconscious mind or past events it will literally seem that way. Your brain will filter out certain information that is there. There is no such thing as an unconscious belief. All of your beliefs are conscious. You, you are just choosing to simply ignore some of them that don't feel too good to you. Because, because when you think about them, they feel a little ugly. So you just shove them away, hoping that they're disappearing, but knowing the entire time that you're playing a game. Your mind will play that game too. Your mind will play whatever game you ask it to play. So if you say that you can't, you can't access this kind of deep information, this kind of intuitive information, like mm -hmm. your, your beliefs are intuitive. If you believe you can't access the inner self, 
if you believe that the inner self is like inherently bad or like inherently faulty by just like being alive, you block off certain information. So it's very important that you understand you're worthy by nature and the inside is always available to the outside because there is no separation. So with that belief alone, with that belief alone, you will be able to start doing this work. Because again, if you believe that you can't access the inside, or if you believe that the inside's bad, you probably shouldn't access it. Or if you believe that, um, that certain emotions are good or bad, and you, you want to be a good person. If you want to be a good person, you will ignore bad emotions. Wow. Uh, okay. But, yeah. So I don't, I don't ask you, I, so none of my clients, I, I, whoever's listening, I don't encourage you to live a good life because to live a good life is really a boring life because to say you live a good life says that you're too scared to embrace the bad. So right. I refuse to live a good life. What I do is I live a whole life, a complete life. Every yeah. part that comes my way, I allow it. Being holy is not about being good. Being holy is about being whole and complete as a human being and accepting your entire experience. Yeah. So it's very important that you also understand all emotions are useful. If you believe that all emotions are constructive and useful, that will allow you to start feeling more of your feelings. Yeah. Now, now, if you feel your feelings and you follow them and you pay attention to your thinking throughout the day, you will find what your beliefs are because you will easily, like, for example, if you're thinking, you know, like, oh, this, per- this, client, this client doesn't have the money to pay for me. Oh, they're not going to be able to afford me. Why are you thinking that? You're probably thinking that because you're not mm. worth it. You're probably thinking that because you're not worthy. Wow. So if, so if, yeah. you just, if you just pay attention to what you think, if you just pay attention to what you feel, if you just pay attention to what you do, for example, if you say I'm a great money manager, but you're going bro- you're living check to check every single week, apparently what you're doing is something that you, apparently it, it's like maybe you don't deserve a lot of money. So you're <laughs> you're doing these things because you believe you don't deserve it. It's, yeah. you, and by the way, really quick, you never do what you say. You only do what you believe. Now, with that wow. being said. Um, You will always go in the direction of your thoughts. So if you just pay attention to your experience, like from the jump, pay attention to your entire experience, you will see everything that's in front of you, which will allow you to completely let it go. I have so many, I know we don't have enough time here, but I have so many blog articles on like literally how to let go of beliefs, how to become aware of them. Just go to the same website, rewiremythoughts.com slash blog. If you go there, you're going to find like I, we, so many things we can jam out on, but there's so many practical tips in that blog for you yeah. to actually like rewire your brain. I teach you how to use this amazing psychic ability that allows you to manipulate your environment, my friends. And you can do this. Um, you can do this because you are the creator by nature. And yeah, um, yeah. I know. Man, I know. I just I went off, what, man, man. But no, I had you to. didn't go off. You, it, it was it was it was wonderful, man. I tell you what, we went deep today and I we appreciate went deep, it. Man. And, and, and I know my audience appreciates it. Listen, everything that you guys need to find Adrian will be in all the links, all the links. But man, listen, thank you for your time. And you did not go off, man. I'll listen to every word you said, man, and drinking it all in. I and, love uh, it, man. I and, love uh, it. I love it. I, I love what you're doing. Thank you for sharing with us today. This is the Unstoppable Podcast. And so it's my desire that everyone listening to develop, uh, uh, get to the place where they're unstoppable. And a lot of us are stopped. We've been stopped by our own limiting beliefs. And yes. you shared with us. Today. Believe you're unstoppable and you yes. will be. You got to believe it. And, and you hit me. You hit me hard. You didn't hear me. You, you didn't You didn't know that you hit me hard. That one point, and I'll share this with it because I'm very transparent. Yeah, go ahead. Man, I, I can't, I, I, I can't set that price because my audience can't afford it. And you said, no, that's not it. You haven't set that price because deep down, you don't think you're worth it. And you don't know what they can. I love that. And I'm like, wow. He, wow. Maybe, maybe that's, that's real. That's yeah. Good. One time I had a real. client who kept procrastinating and he was very disciplined. He was like, I keep procrastinating, but I'm a disciplined person. I'm like, so apparently you're not a procrastinator. You're probably procrastinating because you don't believe that you deserve what doing those things will get you. So you're just yeah. putting it off. Yeah. It was like, yeah. oh, dang, you're right. Yeah. It yeah. always comes down to something deeper. Remember, your it behavior, does. your behavior problems are emotional. problems. <laughs> Man, where can where can everybody find you? Say it again. Rewire. Say yes, it again. Rewiremythoughts.com slash unshakable. Just 
that that or forward slash blog. I don't want to give you guys too much links. If you go to those two links, you will be on my list. You will be reading all of my stuff. You will I'll yeah. be I'll be sharing my podcast on through my email list and all of that. So just go to those two links. We'll be able to connect. And um, I reply to all of my personal emails. We, I get a lot yeah. of them. So feel free to um, ask me any questions through email, which you will get my email whenever you sign up. Oh man, I tell you what, man, this has been great. So let, let's let's come let, let's come up from the deep water. Let me ask you a, a question. What are you reading right now? Are you reading anything that we need to read? What do you What do you got going on besides my yes. book, Unstoppable? Yeah. What, uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. I am. <laughs> so I'm reading. I always read two books at any given time: a business book and a spiritual book. Okay. So the business book that I'm reading right now is called called um, uh, Why We Buy. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Why We Buy. Okay. Something like that. All it's right. Like why we buy? It's a really good book on understanding the psycholo- like the psychological makeup of of why people buy Vinny, of why people like buy why people buy things and stuff. That's yeah. a really good one. And the spiritual book I'm reading right now. All right, it's a really interesting book. But okay. for anybody who's open to a deep read, okay, it's called Seth Speaks, and it's a it's a profound spiritual book that's going to amplify everything that I talked about today. Okay. And okay. It, it just allows you to meet more of yourself. Very good. Very good. That's awesome, man. I love that, I love that question. I, I'm a big reader. I have bookshelves everywhere. So yeah. Yeah. I that's love me that too. question. That's me too. I'm, I'm two books as well. All the yep. time. Uh, last it. question. If you could have a billboard anywhere, anywhere in the world, Adrian could have a billboard. Where would it be? And what would it say? Oh, you're good. This ah, is a good question, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man, yeah. this is a this one really makes me think. Okay, yeah. if I were to have it anywhere, if I were to have it anywhere, I would have it in. I feel like this sounds so like cliche, but because I went to New York one time and it stole yeah. my heart. Yeah. I would love to have it in Upper Upper East Side of New York in particular. I just okay. really love that environment. Okay. And what would it say? It would say 100% better than therapy 100% of the time. And I'll have my number right there. That's what I'm talking about. That, hey, man, if that's what you'd have. 100% of therapy, 100% better than therapy. What would else? What was it? 100%, 100% better than therapy 100% of the time. Exactly. And, and listen, you got to believe in yourself and put your number up there. Exactly. Amen. Right. Like yeah, you asked me, that's my answer. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you for being a part of this podcast. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having me. value to our lives. Um, there will be some breakthroughs. I, I, I know I, there are going to be some breakthroughs in my life right now because of this podcast. And those who listened, I'm sure there are going to be some breakthroughs, man. Thank you for, for taking this, uh, Absolutely. this 40, 50 Thank minutes. Thank you for that, com- hanging that, out that, with that us. comment on the end. Yeah, That's man, you, you're awesome, man. Um, guys, you've been listening on Stop. Well, listen, if you haven't picked up my book, go grab it anywhere books are sold. Barnes and Noble, barnesandnoble.com. Go to my website, Ralph at ralphgreefjr.com. You guys know how to get there. Um, but share this episode. Share it with somebody. Tell somebody about my friend Adrian and what he's doing and, and, uh, and use some of the information he's given us today. But most of all, guys, let's remember, you are unstoppable. So let's be unstoppable together. God bless.